Madron Mission and the United Arab Emirates authorities set to assist more than 300 stranded Nigerians in the United Arab Emirates. Plus, as Nigeria prepares for the 2023 general elections, INEC reassures Nigerians that electronic transmission is sacrosanct, while government deploys new strategy towards tackling insecurity in the country. These and more will bring to you shortly on Panorama. Welcome, I'm Ruth Aguere. The federal government has debunked the news making the rounds on social media that a Nigerian mission in the United Arab Emirates has abandoned some stranded Nigerians in that country and is making it difficult for them to return home. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs says the Nigerian mission and the United Arab Emirates authorities are working to assist more than 300 Nigerians stranded in the country for various reasons ranging from overstay, lost passports, lack of documentation, especially in the case of infants, to pending cases with the Emirate Police. The affected Nigerians are among nationals from all the African countries in custody at the holding center of Al Aware Immigration Office, pending the consideration of their cases and conclusion of the legal processes by the relevant authorities before repatriation. The statement added that the Nigerian mission has been working to collate the details of the stranded Nigerians with a view to issuing emergency travel certificates to those with no means of identification. However, the United Arab Emirates authorities, on the other hand, will process the immigration papers of those on overstay who are the majority and are required by law to pay fines of $10,000 per person, which the Emirates government is willing to waive the fines for those who are unable to pay. However, not without the attendant penalty of 10 years ban from the country. Those in police custody for other alleged offenses must be cleared, while those without documentation or means of identification, especially infants, will go through legal procedures for rectification. Staff of the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development have been advised to be procedural in carrying their activities and update themselves with current ICT knowledge to be relevant in the system. Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olamile Kong Adegbite, gave the advice while launching the Standard Operating Procedure Manual in the Ministry. The Minister appealed to parastators under the Ministry to be faithful, to faithfully rather implement the document in achieving targets in the mining industry. Be patient. You know, do less and achieve more. That's what this will do for us. We are growing in government, all the government, and this will make our work to be more efficient and more productive. Because this reform is one of many that have taken place under this government. Um, transparent, the standard operating procedure also leads into uh, not just uh, efficiency, but also transparency. And it also at least um, assists in ensuring that the effectiveness of the ministry in, 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 in the ministry and all the agencies in the, in the discharge of their duties is of first class. The head of the civil service of the federation has directed that the SOPs be cascaded down to the parastatals for effective implementation of the enterprise content management solutions of FC25. It will also guide them in the implementation of laid down government policies for the development of the mining sector. Look at electoral affairs. INEC has reacted to an online publication saying the commission has jettisoned the electronic transmission of result and reverted to manual process. A statement by INEC National Commissioner for Information, Festus Okoye, says this is not correct and should be disregarded. 
For clarity, the procedure for result transmission remains the same as in the recent governorship elections in Ikiti and Oshun states. There will be no change in all future elections, including the 2023 general elections. INEC reassures Nigerians that the electronic transmission of result has come to stay. It adds to the credibility and transparency of the process when citizens follow polling unit level results on the INEC result viewing portal on real time on election day. There will be no change or deviation in subsequent elections. Based on to security, the Headquarters Sector 2 Joint Task Force Northeast Operation Hadin Kai is investigating two soldiers over alleged murder of an Islamic cleric, Sheikh Goni Gashwa. The Assistant Director, Army Public Relations Headquarters Sector 2, Captain Kennedy Anyao, says Operation Hadin Kai, the sector, in collaboration with Yobe State Police Command, is carrying out investigation to unravel the identity of the suspected soldiers. At the end of the investigation, the soldiers will be made to face the full wrath of both military and civil laws. This incident is highly regrettable given the sector's disposition and zero tolerance on violation of code of conduct and rules of engagement for troops. Consequently, the sector wishes to commiserate with the family of the victim and the good people of Yobe State and promise that justice would be served accordingly. The Imo State Government is deploying non-kinetic approach as a new strategy towards tackling insecurity in parts of the state. Right. The Butchua reports that 146 persons have been inaugurated and charged with the responsibility of promoting peaceful coexistence amongst residents across the state as part of Governor Hope Uzadima's resolve to tackle insecurity headlong. Imo is one of the southeast states affected by insecurity. This has resulted in the state government adopting measures to tackle the situation to ensure security of lives and property. The inauguration of these justices of the peace is part of effort by the Imo state government towards tackling insecurity from the grassroots level. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice Imo State, Sipre Nakolisa, who inaugurated the group on behalf of the Imo state governor, Hope Uzodema, urges the members to use the powers conferred on them in reaching out to members of their respective communities, especially the youths, with a message of peace and the need to shun all forms of restiveness. Killing and violence that has taken place in this state and we call all actors to restrain themselves from killing security personnel some of the newly appointed peace advocates are sure of their commitment to achieving the vision of the Imo State government in the fight against insecurity. There is an assignment that we have been given to ensure that there is peace in Imo State and to assist in the administration of justice. I see it as a great responsibility and I'm willing to participate. I will ensure that I'll keep the peace. I will ensure that um, in my community, I'll work with the community, I mean with the traditional rulers, with fellow justice of the peace to ensure that we maintain the peace in our community. With this inauguration, diligence and fairness becomes the watchword. In a worry, bright about you. NTA News. A look at agri and fatherings of the Food Sufficiency Vision of Aquaibum State Government. The state government has trained and given starter packs to boost livestock production in the state. The gesture is in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Evelyn Bado Epo reports. The Capacity Development Workshop is to further enhance old and new poultry farmers' capabilities in production of quality birds for human consumption and entrepreneurial purposes. The farmers who were trained on effective methods of poultry farming, including choice of species of birds, catering and feeding techniques for maximum yield, promised to put into practice knowledge gained. Mr. Anya Pyongdem, a poultry farmer, says the training has widened the scope of poultry farming. This program has really sharpened me. I have been able to diversify into agri and I want to say categorically that um, since yesterday what we've learned so far 
has been of um, tremendous importance to us and we will use that to promote our poultry farming. The Aquaibon state government on their part says it will not relent in its efforts to ensure crop and livestock farmers are supported with inputs to achieve agricultural revolution. I tell you to make me you. Why are you being supported? Because when you are supported with your production will be lighter, your quantity of produce will be increased, and by special you say you benefit from it. We hope they'll be able to raise this, sell it off, make some profit, and then you know recoup and put this money back into um, boiler production. The event climaxed with a symbolic presentation of starter packs and other inputs to start up poultry farming in Uyo, Evelyn, Badu, Ekbu, NTA News. In the meantime, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has reviewed the country's policy on agricultural seeds to boost farmers' output. Musa Ali reports that the document was developed with support of the United States Agency for International Development. The seed policy document has been a guide for the production, distribution, marketing and importation of agricultural seeds in Nigeria. The policy was last reviewed in 2015, following the new policy and programs introduced by the present administration. The document is undergoing another review under the supervision of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. The successful effort of government towards the attainment of national food security and other goals of agricultural development depends on the performance of the seed industry as the limit of yield response of other farm uh, inputs. The Director General, National Agricultural Seed Council, said the reviewed seed policy has removed the ambiguous areas and introduced innovations that optimize the operations of regulatory agency. Consequently, with the enactment of the National Agricultural Seed Council Act number 21 of 2019, the Council has introduced some innovations and technologies which include the system index. Certification. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture has also developed the National Agricultural Technology and Innovation Plan. The plan adopts a mixed short-term and medium-term multi-stakeholder approach towards ensuring resilience, recovery, and growth. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. All right, let's go on a break. We're back. Stay tuned. <laughs> The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. Welcome back. The Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Limited, NLNG, one of the companies undertaking the construction of roads under the Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme, has received its tax credit certificate from the Federal Inland Revenue Service for the construction of the Boni Border Road in Rivers State. The certificate was received by the company's deputy managing director, Mr. Olalekon Ogunle, who represented the CEO in LNG, Mr. Philip, at the handover ceremony at the FIRS headquarters, Abuja. The executive chairman, FIRS, Mohammed Nami, who commended the NLNG for its increased investments in Nigeria says the service looks forward to the completion of the Train 7 project. The CEO, Nigeria, the CEO NLNG also applauded the FIRS for being at the forefront of economic resuscitation and progress the country is experiencing. In
continuation of the drive to develop an internationally competitive economy, the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board has handed over a vocational hub to the University of Ibadan. Ife Olua Omosule was there and now reports. The multi-million Naira vocational hub, which is equipped with tools that will focus on mechanical, electrical, welding and fabrication, is geared towards empowering the youth to contribute to the development of the oil and gas sector, as well as reducing the country's reliability on foreign mechanical products. The quality of education in universities these days, uh, you, you get a degree, you can't get jobs outside. Uh, now this would address that gap, which is to give you skills that you can use in the real world. We uh, thanking uh, Senator Teslim Folani, you know, for facilitating this edifice. I know that this edifice is going to enhance not only teaching, but teaching and learning. The University of Ibadan. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, NCDMB, noted that the agency has succeeded in building vocational training centers in strategic locations across the country, reiterating that it will not relent in providing necessary equipment required for the smooth running of the center. So it's well equipped at a stage today, but can be enhanced as we go into the training itself. The NCEMB is an agency of the federal government saddled with the responsibility of developing local content in the oil and gas industry. Ifeolu Amoshile, NTA News. Living in harmony with nature is necessary for human survival, but there is a whining insect which makes harmonious living seem impossible. Our next report is about a very small giant at home for which we clap, grumble and must exterminate. When I give my face, we'll tell us about it. Tiny, blood sucking, noisy. Mosquitoes are like the phantasmagoric Jack the Giant Slayer, except that these insects have in reality slayed millions of people. The remains are deadly threats to human existence around the world. Mosquitoes transmit serious diseases such as malaria, dengue fever. Chikungunya, Zika fever, yellow fever, and filariasis. World Health Organization's report estimates 241 million malaria cases and 627,000 malaria deaths worldwide. Africa accounts for 95% of the cases. Nigeria tops the list with 31.9%. Talk about the small but mighty. Flash floods are ravaging several parts of the country, increasing breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Insanitary environmental practices are not helping matters. The world has recognized mosquitoes as insects of significance. If there is no mosquito, there is not going to be a malaria. And environment play a significant role when it comes to the disease prevention. Whatever we give to our environment, what we will get a return to this effect environmental health officers in nigeria took to the streets with a message keep the environment clean eradicate mosquitoes pest control is supposed to be proactive not reactive we are supposed to create the environment to make sure that the pests don't break there not that you wait for them to break then you go in there to kill them the theme of world mosquito day 2022 is harness innovation to reduce the malaria disease burden and save lives. Omogie, fine face. Continues. And you know they target the blood, right? And talking about blood, Nigerians and stakeholders involved in blood business and production of blood components advise to register their blood bank facilities with the National Blood Service Commission. The acting director general of the commission, Dr. Omale Joseph, says this is to ensure the implementation of blood services regulatory policies as provided in the National Blood Service Act 2014. Basita Ipang reports. All blood establishments, including healthcare facilities, needs to be appropriately regulated and coordinated for safety and quality of blood given to Nigerians. I am to remind us that sanctions for offenses are clearly enumerated in the National Health Act 2014 
section 48 3 a to b section 49 to 51 he noted that a process is involved in providing safe and quality blood and blood products in terms of donor selection collection storage appropriate testing technology cold chain system distribution and client protection as well as disposal of waste products or safe blood transfusion does not only expose patients to the risk of serious adverse reaction but risk of being infected by viral diseases therefore we as a commission cannot continue to allow people to transfuse infected and or expired blood to our people no blood shall be transfused anywhere in nigeria without the national blood service commission seal of accreditation national blood service commission is saddled with the responsibility of regulating and coordinating blood services to ensure provision of safe and quality blood to nigerians basi taipa empty news early recruitment of more than one million nigerians that will serve as ad hoc staff during the 2023 census is part of recommendations at the week-long retreat organized by the national population commission olusheye adiago has more on the outcome of the retreat which was recently concluded in abuja the National Population Commission has said the exercise will be anchored largely on technology and during the trial census held in 286 local government areas across the country to test on procedures and technology for the 2023 census, 13,461 Nigerians were engaged as ad hoc staff. Though these feed functionaries were trained for 12 days, submissions at the retreat point of the need for early recruitment to get them better acquainted on the usage of the personal digital assistant. We were able to identify essentially the area of uh, the recruitment and training. The recruitment needed to really have uh, started earlier. So the training will have a longer period for training. Why agents of the NPC present plans to strengthen gains of the trial sensors, especially on publicity and security? Other findings and recommendations from participants at the retreat involve brand, logistics, and internet connectivity. All this is aimed at improving our systems, our operations, to make sure that we get it right for the census. As the curtains draw on the retreat, the key players championing the census programs are optimistic of achieving an accurate, credible, and acceptable census data. In April 2023, in Abuja, Olusha and Tia News. All right, let's bring you Spot's update. The hope of Nigeria's Falconet to win the 10th FIFA Under 20 Women's.